and the big picture overview is um, in 2008, I think, um, the WCA changed their scramble format from this really disgusting thing. Oh, let me find it. And this really disgusting thing where the faces are labeled with capital A through capital F and lowercase a through lowercase f for the 12 sides. And you're supposed to follow this? Excuse me? This is not reasonable to do. Um, it's very slow to do this type of Mega Wing scrambles. It mixes up the pieces very well, but it's very slow to do. So, um, this is from the 2008 regulations. Starting from 2009, sorry, this is from 2007 regulations. Starting from 2008, um, the WCA switched to a new scramble format for Mega Minx, which is the same one that we use today with this R. Sorry, let me just fix my camera and go with it. With this um, R, D, kind of thing. And like this is mostly 2 gen, so it turns out that this is actually not so difficult to do quickly. Like I can do it around 2.8, 2.9 turns per second. Um, so you know, th the amount of time I take to do a scramble is like more or less the same level as like how long it takes for the very fastest people in the world to solve the thing things. Right, so the thing is, um, because it's mostly 2 gen and there are only 2 choices for how to make each move, so that means there are 70 moves and so there are only 2 to power of 70 possible states that you can reach from that. Um, I'm not going to give like super in-depth review of the scrambling method right now because I'm going to go through it again later. But anyway, um, 2 to the power of 70 is around 10 to the power of 21 but you can see that the total number of positions on the Mega Mix is around 10 to the power of 68 so like 10 to the power of 21 is a drop in the ocean it's not even a drop in the ocean it's like orders of magnitude less than that um, <laughs> so something that I have been concerned about for quite a few years is whether this causes any noticeable bias in the Mega Minx positions. So up until <coughs> yeah, I don't want to say up until recently because it's not like I'm the only one who has had this um suspicion. But most people haven't really thought about this before, and it turns out that um. If you just uh, take a random WCA competition with Mega Wing Scrambles, there's actually a very simple statistical test you can do to distinguish the scrambled state. So like, you do the scramble, then you don't look at the scramble sequence anymore, and you just compare the puzzle state. There's a simple statistical test you can do to that, and with very high confidence, so like around 99% confidence, um, you can distinguish uh, this Pogman 70 more scrambles from the null hypothesis of the scramble states being chosen uniformly from all of these 10 to the power of 68 positions. And it's not something that requires complicated computations or calculations or anything of that sort. Like you just look at it, you count the number of attached pieces and this distribution is significantly different from uniform random state. And like, the surprising thing to me is um, if you do a bit of research, people have actually brought up similar issues all the way back in 2009. So like that was around one year after the WCA switched to the Pogman scrambles by Stefan Pogman. Um, the, the same Pogman in the old Pogman blindfold solving method. Uh, so like this 
people have suspect some people have suspected this for like many years, like since two thousand nine, and I was not so into speed queuing at that time. But um, I have had my suspicions as well. Um. Gosh, what am I pressing? I think the post was in like 2000 or something. I also just realized 2000 doesn't narrow it down a lot. <laughs> well, that's um, when most of the posts in this chat apparently happened. This is the layer by layer podcast discussion thread. Oh, I just realized my stream is quite choppy. Is it working? It seems to be working. Oh, no, 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 oh, it's not this. Right. Um, so in one of the layer by layer episodes, apparently Kit Clement investigated the distribution of Mega Man Scrambles and he said that um, uh, what is it? I don't remember the exact content of the podcast episode, but is it that the distribution of the star just was close to uniform, which I now don't think is entirely accurate. I should have searched, like, reading from the front instead of reading from the back. If it's going to be in an, in an early page anyway. Um, <laughs> I think this is page. Yes, this is this page. Some comments about it. So right. Over here, the text is a bit small in the stream. I don't expect you to actually read it there. This is the speed solving um, forum. The, so I'm just reading out what I wrote before. This is my post. Um, the out of C plus plus Mega Man scrambling method was often used as an example of how you can use a tiny portion of the entire state space and still have an essentially uniform distribution. What's important isn't really that the distribution is uniform, but that it's impossible to efficiently distinguish the actual distribution from the uniform distribution. In principle, one could go through all 2 to the power of 70 possible Megamix scrambles to pick out certain biases, but the hope is that being able to reliably tell apart uniform sampling versus sampling among the 70 move Pogman scrambles should be difficult okay so <laughs> this was um i think uh lucas garen was like the one who really pushed this viewpoint and now it's coming under scrutiny so here i say I'm almost certain that the 70 most scrambles we're using for Mega Mix have human noticeable biases that can be teased out within 100 scrambles. Yes, that was too conservative. You can tease it out within 20 scrambles. You don't need 100. So like, if you have a competition with four rounds of Mega Mix, that's 20 scramble sequences, you can figure out a bias from those. You can differentiate it from the null hypothesis of um, Uniform random state. 
with very high confidence. It's like over two sigma. It's that bad. <laughs> So here I say I don't really have a solution to this besides increase scramble length to 100 plus moves. Yeah. So, um, a while back, so like end 2022, um, I did this really ridiculous and um, really stupid Mega Mix FMC competition. Um, I made this post in like late mid December 2022 and the competition ran for basically two weeks until the end of the year. At the time the Megamix FMC UWR was like very bad. So the single was a reasonable result, like 100 moves by James McDermott. But the mean of three, average of five, average of twelve results were all garbage. They were like I could get lower move counts just by doing linear solves, so they were embarrassingly bad. I knew I could beat those very easily. Um, so that's why I did this thing. And at this point, I mean, I hadn't done any rigorous testing of um, scramble quality, but I had a gut feel it was not quite right like 70 moves was not enough so for this competition i generated 100 more scrambles uh, let me see if i can find the code give me a moment how come it's a gray color screen why is it like that what's going on How come it grays out when I switch windows? No, I'm not gonna worry about that now. Um, yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, this was kind of a draft of what went into the. Um, speed solving forum thread so this is uh, this is, this part is the code where I generate the scrambles so I, uh, I need some function to get a random bit because you know to choose whether you do r plus plus or r minus minus d plus <laughs> d plus plus or d minus minus so the random bit is for that and um, if the crypto API is available, then we use that. If not, then we use math.random. So I ran this within Node to generate the scrambles, and Node does have a crypto API. I don't think it's like 100% compatible with the web version of the crypto API, but it's close enough, and this works in both a web browser and in the Node runtime. So like, these are the center permutations by doing the R plus plus and D plus plus. So here, this part, and choose a random move, blah 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 blah. This part is just choosing R plus plus and D plus plus. This part is um, if the centers all, if the puzzle ends up in scramble orientation, so white top green one. Um, my Mega Max is a weird color scheme. Let me choose another one. So white top green front. If the Mega Minx ends up in scramble orientation, then we keep the scramble sequence. If not, we re-roll, we regenerate all the common scramble moves, so all the R plus C plus plus randomly. And filter out to those with the scrambles that end up in scramble orientation, white top green front. And yeah. So these are the scramble sequences. Um, I did not load them into Tizzle or try them out before, you know, actually doing the attempts. But I think I generated these like a few days before I made the thread. Uh, yeah, this was made in. I made this 
just in December 18. <laughs> I don't mind the timestamps. And this post was December 19. So yeah. So I had already generated the scrambles, then one day later I made the thread. Then two more days later I actually posted the scrambles to the to the thread. Anyway, so all of that is to say that um, I ended up using 100 move scrambles rather than the standard. So like each row of the Mega Man scramble is 10 rows. So the standard one has um, 7 rows. And the ones I did for this Mega Man's FMC competition had 10 rows to each scramble. But nevertheless, 10 rows is apparently still not enough. Um, Like the bias compared to uniform random state is, of course, it's much smaller. But the problem is that 17 moves was already kind of bad, so like much better than very bad. You don't know how good that is, but long story short, it's still not that great. So, past few days, I've been experimenting, experimenting with um, new scrambling formats. And it turns out that this is a really difficult problem. So if you go back to this, um, the cursed legacy Mega Man scramblers, these 12 gen scrambles are like, nope, they are hell to apply to the puzzle. So CS timer has Kilomings random six scrambles now, and they are also 12 gen. I tried doing those, they are very unpleasant to do. So, yeah. Like, it's really unpleasant on a Kilo Minx, and you want me to do this on a Mega Minx correctly? No way. No thanks. So, like, this 12 gen scrambles, random ball scrambles, actually do have one benefit, and it's that they are very good at mixing up the pieces in ways that um the other like non 12th gen scramble formats are not so good at <sighs> I guess I've already pontificating on making my scrambles. <laughs> I was not planning to go into that but I guess we are already here so you know Let's roll with it. So yeah, you may have seen um this Mega Man scram sorry not Mega Man Kilo Man scrambler before. That is something I coded in like 2016, 2017. What well, during National Day <laughs> for some reason? Oh yeah, it should be 2016. I that was a that was a very very bad um. Not bad. That is not the appropriate word. Um, there was a story behind this. So National Day, there's a public holiday over here, and like that day, I spent cooped up in my room. Not because it was a holiday, like not only because it was a holiday, but um, there were things going on that day at home, and I did not want to go out of my room. Anyway, um, so yeah, the my what I actually wanted to say was the scramble sequences generated with this uh, kilometers random state scrambler. These are not actually random state scrambles, but the random state ones use the same notation. This use like fairly mostly obvious notation. So like br, you know what br means? It's just the Back right face. U R B R L left. B L is the back left face. So like on standard scramble orientation, U is white, green is sorry, F is green, L is purple, R is red, blue back right, yellow back left. So this is the standard um, top hemisphere labels. 
and what if you want to access the other six faces? That's why we introduced this, the flip. Um, Twizzle actually does not support this notation. Twizzle uses X2. Uh, I'm not a fan of calling it X2, but that's a battle for another time. But anyway, it's just like that. Flip it around, and that lets you access the other six faces on the puzzle. Like flipping is not a fast operation, but in a random stage scramble, you need to do it like two or three times, so no big deal. And then in a random stage scramble, four kilometers. Let me emphasize that. Um, now, as um possible to adapt the kilomings random state scramble method to a mega wings in theory but nobody has done it yet um, so like you it's mostly sixth gen using the top hemisphere faces so like u l f r b r and b l these six faces and when you need to access the other side you flip and the scramble generation is done in a way so that you minimize the total number of flips needed It's possible to do this for Mega Mix. Nobody has done it yet, to my knowledge. It may be one of those Mega Mix solving robots do something like this already. I'm not aware of that. But anyway, yeah, so this is one way that we can um, access 12 sites using limited notation. Limited and readable notation so now we take it for granted but at the time calling this r plus plus and calling this d plus plus or d minus minus was um it's very not obvious like i was not into speed queuing at the time so i was not aware of like the actual community opinion but in hindsight i would expect that um there might have been a bit of pushback against this new weird notation that's only applicable for Mega Mix and it's not used anywhere else. And that goes to like scoop scramble notation. Like you wouldn't learn else by scoop else by reading them in FCN. That's FCN is not a good notation for writing out scoop else. Like you can't even write out a sledgehammer from some angles in FCN. So um, this is a this R plus plus D plus plus and Megamix scrambles. No, that's not what I want to see. <laughs> X of this. That is Megamix. That is my Megamix session. Go uh, up. Megamix. Uh, so this R plus plus D plus plus thing. Um, it's a Megamix specific Mainly scramble specific notation, and if you are to design a new Mega Mix scramble format, one of the constraints I would like to have is that it should not use too much new notation. Like to some extent, it's maybe unavoidable. We can accept some, but it should not involve like anything beyond um the six top hemisphere moves, face moves, maybe T should be allowed, maybe one other face, but it should not involve like turning all 12 faces or anything we are like that. Um, I do have a few candidates for how to scramble Mega Wings, like new scramble formats, and they do perform better than the pac -Man scrambles in terms of distributing the pieces more evenly or at least um, I haven't checked that thoroughly yet but I checked some aspects of it some aspects of it are better the other aspects I have not checked so I expect them to be better as well because there's no reason for it to be that to be uncorrelated or to be anti-correlated rather yeah so New scramble format. So one of them is um, you do like face turns on the 
side on these five phases, so the BL, BR, RF, and L phases. Then you flip it over, then you do it again. Then flip it over, you do that again. Flip it over, you do that again. Flip it over, these five phases. Flip, 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 flip. So, um, this involves a lot of flipping, and it's actually not that slow to apply if the moves are just one fifth turns. The problem with this scrambling method is that once you start doing two fifth turns, that reduces the scrambling speed drastically. Oh, hello. Um, is that a capital I or an L? I think it's a capital I. Is he a hell boy? Hello. I am apparently giving a lecture on um, scrambling methods to nobody who is interested. But that's kind of the usual business with the streak. So I'm rolling with it. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, coming back to where I was. Uh, so you do something like B L B R, then R prime F L prime. You flip it over, and you do the same thing on these five faces. And how do I do that? And you just repeat that over and over again, and you can verify using um some software programs like GAP, G A P, uh, that it's possible to reach all legal Nakamix configurations with this scramble method. And I can do this in around um two point five turns per second, so a bit, eh, two point five, yeah, around two point five to two point six turns per second. So it's still with the one fifth turn version. It's not terrible to execute but it um it, it doesn't mix very well. There are a lot of caveats um like that's the basic outline. There are some variations in the final version that I came up with, like introducing extra new moves or rotations or whatever. It works okay but it's not like a drastic improvement and if you want to reduce the bias to under one percent then you still need something like 90 to 100 moves like that's compared to 170 moves for the pac-man style scrambles so that's still a huge improvement but the there's a social aspect to this which is that if you introduce a new scrambling method, but you also make it longer so that it looks much harder to apply, people are not going to take it well, take to it well, and if that's the case, then they won't adopt the new scrambling method, then you're stuck with the bad old Pokemon scrambles. <sighs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I don't have much else to say on this topic. Yeah. And there's something else of it. There's another mechanism scrambling format I've been experimenting with, which is um, difficult to apply quickly, but once you get the hang of it, then it mixes up very well. Like much better than this um, do five faces flip, do five faces flip thing that I just mentioned. And, and that in turn is already much better than the Pokemon scramble, so it's a huge improvement, but the scrambling speed is much lower. So, pros and cons. It's, it's very hard to find a good balance between a scrambling method that's easy to apply correctly and quickly. And a scrambling method that mixes up the pieces very well. Palmer scrambles are actually bad. That's that's the main takeaway. <laughs> I actually have um one. So yesterday I opened up like the first competition with Mega Mix that I could find. Then I looked at the scrambles there. <laughs> so I 
these are the scrambles. So there's only one round of Mega Mix in this competition with two groups in the round. So that gives us 14 scrambles, so like 5 main scrambles and then the 2 extra scrambles for each group. So 7 times 2, 14 scrambles. And you can load them into Tizzle and those are very basic analysis on them. Oh, here's a sneak peek of oh, my new something like that. Anyway, I just deleted it so you don't get to see it anymore. Right, so what you could do here, for example, is count the number of each pieces that are attached to the center. So, like here, we have this green and blue edge attached to the green center. So, we count that as one. This one in green, and I don't know what the other color is. <laughs> I guess it's white. This one is also attached to the green center, so we count that as another one. Two so far. Three, four, Five, six. Yeah, so this scramble has six attached stages. And you can do this for the other scrambles over here. I actually did that yesterday already. And um, where are my results? So the first one has six. Then the next one is three, seven, seven, five, eight, five, twelve, two, six, four, twelve, ten, three. And in total, there are 90 attached edges across these 14 scrambles. With the null hypothesis of um, the scrambles being drawn from the uniform distribution, the, the scramble states being drawn from the uniform distribution, then we should expect a roughly normal distribution with mean or try Okay, the distribution of attached edges on a single scramble is approximately Poisson with a mean of 5 and a variance of around 5.4, 5.5. So like, it's not exactly Poisson, but kind of close. And that's the null hypothesis. So like, if we add up 14 of these, we, we will expect um, a mean of 70 and a variance of around... Also around 70 to 90, around there. I can't be able to do the exact calculations in my head right now. Yeah, but anyway, we can do that. Then we can do the, we can compare. I, it's been forever since I took a stats class, so I don't remember the terminology, but we can compare that to the CDF of a normal distribution and get a p-value out of that. And the p-value is 99.02%. So, you know, if you take the standard 95% cutoff, this exceeds that, so there's a bias detected. Using just one competition's results. Oh, hello. <laughs> Your stream is not very property. Um... <laughs> You know, this, this is a bit coincidental, like, I, um, you messaged me on the speed solving forum recently about this topic. <laughs> I need to drink some water. Yeah. So, like, rendable scrambles are bad. For Mega Wings and trying to find a new way to fix it, or new scrambling format that fixes it. <laughs> 